Slip stitch, stitch in a ditch. Slip stitch, stitch in a ditch. Say what? How many times have you stitched in the ditch to avoid slip stitching for some reason? Only to discover when you turn that garment on the inside that either A, the stitching is all off, it looks terrible, or B, the whole reason that you slip stitch in the first place failed. Hey, 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 it's Siri, Virginia's daughter. And today I'm gonna to be talking about slip stitching versus stitching in the ditch. There's not a whole lot to say about slip stitching. For the most part, slip stitching, eh, it's no big deal. It's hard to mess that up, actually. Stitching in the ditch, on the other hand, that's where you sew in the, the well of the seam. So you stitch two pieces of fabric together, press the seam allowance open, turn it over on the right side, and there's like a ditch in the fabric. That's where you stitch by sewing machine in the ditch to secure maybe a continuation of fabric on the back or something. You're trying to connect something to the, the garment and at the same time, you know, creating like a clean finish for it all. While slip stitching is relaxing at times, it's mindless really. You can just, you don't, you can be thinking about something else while you're doing it. At the same time, you don't always want to do it. In round four, I made six tunics. Y'all still hearing about them tunics yet? But that's really what led me to this experiment. It's McCall 7408. All of the inside finishes were slip stitch. So if you follow the pattern instructions, it would have you to slip stitch all of the bands. Some of them I slip stitched and some of them I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna stitch in the ditch for time's sake. You know, I wanted to get done with the projects. So that's what I did. I stitched in the ditch because sometimes you will fall outside of the ditch, you know, which is fine if you're, if you're Thread color is okay. It really doesn't affect it that much. Not too much, because you don't go too far out the ditch, but you want to stay in the ditch as much as you can. And I find that even that takes a little practice. There were some problems that came up with my stitching in the ditch. When I stitched in the ditch, I thought I was doing okay. Staying in the ditch, I turn it over and it's a hot mess. I'm talking about a hot mess, you know. One, the stitching is all uneven. The pressed edge is smaller in some places, larger in others. Some places it didn't even connect at all. So in other words, you know, the goal of stitching in the ditch is to capture the fabric on the inside of the garment, on the other side of the garment, while at the same time providing a clean finish. I'd get it done and some of it wasn't even connected. One of the garments, you'll see me on videotape, and I'm like, oh, I did, why did I slip stitch this? And I'm like, oh, I know why I did, because some of it didn't catch. I did slip stitch this, did I? Because it was a little wonky. Oh, you know what? I slip stitched it because some of it didn't catch. Well, I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. So I just decided to set aside some time and do an experiment. So this is what I did. I wanted to do several fabrics. So I started out with a lightweight fabric. And then I went to a heavier fabric. This is a corduroy, a really nice corduroy that came from Virginia Stash. Actually, I don't, I don't remember making anything out of it, so it might have been just a remnant because I have this big trash can that I've never used for trash. It stands about that high, this big around, and it's just filled with like fabric remnants. Every once in a while, I go through it and throw stuff away that I'm like, why did I keep this? It's not even a regular shape. It's crazy looking. And then I did this, you know, another weight of cotton. It's a little bit heavier than this one, and it's puckered somewhat like, um, See your sucker? Is that what that's called? Then there's this suiting fabric, this men's suiting fabric. I did some chalet, some rayon chalet. This fabric is such a delight to work with. It ravels like crazy, but you know, it just presses up real nicely. This on the other hand, contrast to so this one because whew, rolly, ravelly, just kind of does what it wants. But anyway, I went heavier and something with a pile to it because you know, you may not always use slip stitching on this type of fabric, but I'm always trying something different and I'm like, I might want to try to make a jacket or something and have a cuff or something and you know, might even make a shirt. I mean, who knows? All of the samples in this experiment were just done on a straight piece of fabric. I didn't do any curves, any turns, any of that. What I did with these was, Now, they weren't terrible. There is some irregularity in terms of, you know, it starts very small and then it just gets a little wider. 
And then the second one, this one I did, I got really close to it and I did a second stitch. Oh, I see, because on the outside, I went out of the ditch quite a bit. That's why you see two stitches on here. But then again, toward the end, it just veers off and gets a little thicker. This is the first one that I did. First, let's take a look at the ditch itself. You can see where I went outside of the ditch. I'm gonna mark this in a way, hang on a second. Okay, looks like I was out of the ditch <laughs> more than I was in the ditch on this one, okay? okay so these, these marks here, so this is out of the ditch, in the ditch, out of the ditch, in the ditch, out of the ditch, and so on. And what I'm gonna do is show you what the back of that looks like. So, Actually, what I found is that when you go out of the ditch, because you don't go too far out of the ditch, right? How do you stay in the ditch? So there's a place that I, on my presser foot for it to be in the ditch, but I get tired of looking at that thing. I find myself going back from the needle to the, I'm like, Terry, you're supposed to keep your eye on that, but I need to find a guide. So I read somewhere. So quilters use this technique as well. And I don't think they don't have a, do they have a stitch in, they may have a stitch in the ditch presser foot. Did I read that somewhere? I'll double check. You can see that on the back here, the actual seam allowance that I trimmed is above the pressed edge. And you don't want that. You certainly don't want that. Here it appears to be even. If I lift the lip up, I can see that all the fabric was gathered. So yes, this isn't terrible.
this one, I took the pressed edge a little bit above the seam allowance. Okay, now on this one, I stay in the ditch more than I'm out of the ditch. So all of this is in the ditch. This little portion here is out of the ditch, in the ditch, out of the ditch. And this doesn't look terrible. There's still some unevenness. So you'll notice that it's even, 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 mm, all the way till about here. And then it just gets, it tapers off a bit and gets thinner. Let's look this up and see. Okay, this is well under. This is well under. So I'm gonna push the lip back here so you can see. That's well underneath there. It seems like as I go along, I'm getting closer and closer to getting what I want. Now this is in the ditch, all of it. Ah, 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 maybe a little bit. Let me show you. This much is outside of the ditch. And now this is very close to the edge, right? This is where I wanna be. I would wanna get as close to that edge, that pressed edge as possible. And I think that's the goal. That looks the nicest by far. Oh, and Here's some that's not even, so here's some that didn't catch. Yeah. So I can see the seam is above the pressed edge. And I stayed in the ditch on that part. And then the last one, these just kept getting better. And you know, the whole reason I'm saying this is like, you just have to practice it. You know what I mean? You gotta make the time to hone in on your craft. And you know, beginning my unfinished projects, has gotten me to this place. This is pretty much all stitch in the ditch. This is probably the nicest one. It's number four, the last one I did. It's almost even and the lip is very small. I think that's, that's important.
And then this one, whoo, this was a juicy. This is, this is uh, terrible. First of all, there was no way I was going to press this over and then try to attach this this way. It just, that would have been way too thick. I wasn't gonna do that. The one thing that I did notice is, you see how this is kind of rolling here? Something is pulling here. It's uneven. This is a mess. I think this is messy inside. And you know, anytime you're dealing with pile fabric, I think you have an, a lot of chances for something to be messy. This is gonna take some more practice. I was not satisfied with this. And then this one wasn't too terrible, but it was some extra work. What I did was this came out quite nice, but there was such a lip here. I was like, man, so I just surged it. And that's what that looks like. So those were the heavier fabrics. Still some unevenness, I'm gonna call it. So even though I stayed in the ditch, it's uneven here. This one turned out very nice, actually. This is the nicest one. So this is on the edge, right on the edge. And so again, with these trimmed to eighth of an inch, graded the seams, one, the top seam allowance was one eighth of an inch, the one that's gonna have be covered by the pressed edge. And then I went a little bit above that. I think I like that technique better. I don't like making it um, you know, flush or even with the seam allowance because there's too much room for it to peek out from under there. I like the idea of covering it up a little. Oh, I was in and out of the ditch on this one. Shall I mark this one? Let's see here. This is hard to tell. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Looks like I was out of the ditch most of the time here. Let's see. Yeah, so for most of this one, I was outside of the ditch. So the green, that's when I was in the ditch. Again, you get some kind of variation in the width of the pressed edge, which is what I discovered. It's all about that pressed edge. And then this last one is a charmeuse. This was a mother hubba. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this one was hard. It rolled a lot. This was actually fun though. It was very fun to do. And then when you start seeing results, like I could see now that I would look at slip stitching a little bit differently because I'd be concerned about, uh, you know, the press scene. So that's why I wanted to conduct the experiment. With experiment, it's like, what is it? Like, why is this messing up? What I discovered was, is all about that pressed edge. If your pressed edge is too high above the seam, it's gonna create a lip. If your pressed edge is too low beneath the seam, or if it shifts while you're stitching to fall below where you're stitching, you're gonna miss it. You're not gonna capture that fabric. If you veer off a little bit from being in the ditch, just make sure you have the right color thread because it really doesn't affect it that much. And you don't wanna see it on the right side of the garment. From now on, when I stitch in the ditch, what I will do is ensure that my pressed edge is even. And then the placement of the pressed edge is also key. So if the seam allowance that you trim is uneven, the pressed edge is going to be uneven. And although the ditch is straight, it's going to create some variation. So those are the things that I discovered. I will take care to make sure I do those things, take the time to do that initially so that it will turn out the way that I want it. And like with anything, do it enough times it just becomes second, second nature, second nature. I'm pleased with the outcome. I can tell you what, my stitching in the ditch is going to be better from now on. So yeah, that is it.
I want to say thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have anything to add, please do. I welcome your feedback. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe and join the community, you can do that as well. And if you want to know the next time I upload a video, tap that notification bell and you'll be notified when that happens. Until next time, take care.